Two major winter storms are expected to move through the, the west coast as well as the Midwest. If we were to take a look at the latest depiction of the European model at this time, we see that temperatures are well below average throughout the northern Midwest where we're seeing a strong northerly flow that's bringing that Arctic air further southward. So make sure to bundle up this weekend for much of northern Midwest as temperatures will be much colder than average where you could see temperatures below zero at times in certain areas. So make sure to watch out for that possibility. But moving forward into next week where we're going to see the jet stream sort of straighten out, but eventually we're going to see a uh, low pressure system come off the Pacific Northwest coast, which has been a common trend we've been seeing all winter long, and it should prolong the impacts you've been experiencing throughout California when it comes to rainfall and snowfall. And we're expect and most of the West Coast, especially in the higher elevations, is expected to receive snowfall from this um, from this storm system as it approaches the West Coast, and we do see that um, we see heavy snowfall throughout Nevada the higher elevations of California and so Oregon as well and Utah even New Mexico and Arizona are getting involved with some snowfall from this storm system. This storm system isn't necessarily very powerful, but it is enough to dump a large area of five to eight inches of snow in the higher elevations and potentially even more than that, potentially more than a foot with this first low pressure system. I'm not even including the second low pressure system that's expected to move ashore along the west coast. So moving forward with this storm system, there's also going to be a decent amount of cold air behind it. And while I don't expect a high amount of instability to exist in the midsection of the country. It will be enough to to produce a mildly a mildly intense snowstorm for the northern Midwest, where we do see that the snow pressure system will drop a little bit in terms of air pressure, which means that it's of course going to strengthen just ever so slightly as it continues to move further north eastward. And we should see some snow in South Dakota, Minnesota, as well as North Dakota. But the snowfall will be relatively light because, like I said, the instability won't necessarily be very high from this first um, snowstorm. There won't be a highly convective environment to produce a heavy snowfall threat. So um, it won't necessarily be considered major, at least this first snowstorm, but you still need to watch out for that possibility of one to three to potentially three to six inches of snow from this first snowstorm, which is expected to move through by the Tuesday to Wednesday time frame throughout the northern Midwest and for much of the West Coast and the higher elevations of the western half of the United States. You should expect impacts as early as Monday and throughout Tuesday as well. So you want to pay close attention to that in the higher elevations along the western half of the United States, including bigger cities like Salt Lake City could maybe get involved with some snowfall in this scenario. Now, moving forward, there's going to be another low pressure system that's going to be quite a bit more powerful moving ashore along the California coast. It should move ashore right around central California and the certainty is very high regarding the exact trajectory of this first and of course the second low pressure system as at least as it moves ashore beyond this point it does become a little bit more uncertain because the GFS and the European model are still having disagreements regarding how strong this ridge will be uh, will come out to be as we approach next week and that will determine the exact trajectory and who receives the snowfall in the Midwest by next week so we're gonna need to pay close attention to how this ridge will develop by next week because that will be definitely a big factor when determining who receives the heavy snowfall and of course how much instability this um, storm system will encounter but moving but moving into the late Tuesday top frame we see very heavy snowfall throughout the Sierra uh, mountain ranges of California where you could easily receive not inches but feet of snow from this snowstorm I wouldn't be surprised if some localized areas receive over three feet of snow and this could even include the Southern California mountains where the higher elevations of Southern California could receive potentially um, close to a foot of snow. Um, so you need to pay close attention to that possibility. And of course, you need to watch out for the heavy rain threat that um, that will occur along the um, west coast of California. Of course, it's been a rough winter when it comes to rainfall and this storm system is expected to bring even more heavy rainfall where you should expect a pretty large area of one to three inches of rain and potentially localized areas um, that will receive even more rainfall. So 
don't rule out the possibility of flash flooding throughout the um throughout california as we approach next week from this next storm system so los angeles san diego san francisco all need to watch out for the possibility of flooding as we approach next week um, more sickly from this second storm system now moving forward we do see that the snow will eventually move westward where nevada utah and colorado will get involved and the and the low pressure system does strengthen just a little bit there's going to be a lot more cold air behind this low pressure system and not only that this ridge that was initially building earlier in the week has become a lot stronger by this point of next week so we're gonna see a stronger subtly flow and that will induce an even more unstable environment in the midsection of the country and that will create of course a more convective environment for the storm to continue to intensify and we see that the snow um, that the low pressure system will move towards the eastern half of Colorado by the early Thursday time frame but we still will see a snow linger around um, for, for a prolonged period throughout the western half of the United States in the higher elevations so you want to be aware of that possibility and temperatures will be much colder than average which is the reason why um, the, the mountains of Southern California are expecting to receive snowfall from this storm because there's a uh, high, um, uh, high level of cold air behind this storm system. So, of course, um, even though the Southern California mountains are a little bit lower in elevation, it's going to be cold enough to support for snowfall in those areas. So, you need to watch out for that if you're in, um, throughout pretty much the entirety of the West and half of the United States. Now, moving forward, we see that this soil pressure system will eventually move towards the midsection of the country where it's going to be able to tap into that very warm Gulf of Mexico air mass, and that will allow this the snow to become a little bit more consolidated for potentially a major winter storm to develop in the northern Midwest, where we do see that this first round of precipitation will move through um just north of the ohara valley it'll be primarily a rain vent at least this first round of precipitation as the ridge is quite strong just to the east of this low pressure system but moving forward we're going to see that this storm uh, um as a result of another pretty powerful blast of cold air that moves towards the gulf of um, um the gulf of mexico air mass we're going to see the slow pressure some strength uh, another low pressure some strengthen right behind this first round of precipitation and that will be the and that will be the round where the area of snow will be large enough and will be heavy enough to produce our next major snowstorm for the midwest now there's uncertainty regarding the exact trajectory of where the heaviest snow will fall the european model is expecting this ridge to be a lot stronger and a lot more and a lot larger than what the gfs model is forecasting and what that means is that there's going to be a stronger subtly flow so this low pressure system will move northward rather uh, more quickly than the gfs model and that means that more that the snow will be relegated more to, towards the extreme northern portions of the great lakes rather than maybe the southern portions of the great lakes like the gfs model is forecasting and we see more of the snow impact the more northwestern portions of the great lakes region where minneapolis will get involved in this scenario with um, northern wisconsin northern michigan rather than let's say southern michigan or um, portions of southern wisconsin so going to be um, a very interesting forecast we're going to need to wait and see how strong this ridge will be um, but make sure to be aware of that possibility because it should move through by the thursday to friday time frame so we have a week until we could really iron out the forecast but the gfs model while i did say there are disagreements they're still taking a fairly similar trajectory at least a very similar general trajectory when it comes to these two low pressure systems so certainty is rather high that a major winter storm will impact the um, northern great lakes by next week the question is where exactly that heaviest snow will fall and it and they're both taking a very similar um scenario when it comes to strength of this low pressure system so that certainly does raise a certainty with this storm by next week but still we got iron out those few um differences between the two com um computer models at this time and it's gonna take several days to really get a really good idea of who will get the heaviest snowfall but i'll keep guys updated over the next several days just know that there is a possibility of over six inches of snow from this snowstorm in the northern great lakes but i'll keep guys updated now let me show you guys the gfs model scenario 
For this first snowstorm, the GFS model is showing a very similar scenario. We're going to see that this low pressure system will eventually move along the California coast, bringing heavy snowfall throughout the higher elevations. And eventually, it should move towards the northern Midwest, bringing a large area of mostly one to three inches of snow. Well, of course, the second low pressure system will be a bit more powerful, and you could expect um, heavy snowfall in the higher elevations and potentially heavy rain right up along the coast. But a uh, difference is that the GFS model doesn't expect the ridge just to the east of this low pressure system to be as strong. So we see the snow impact the areas a little bit further southward where more of um, southern Michigan will get involved in this scenario. I, um, let me show you guys it's the 18Z run. This is the older 12Z run. Let me show you guys that right now. So let's take a look at the 18Z run of the GFS model. We see that the snow impacts the areas a lot further southward where a larger portion of Michigan gets involved and where this would certainly be considered a major snowstorm for Michigan. We're really gonna need to determine where exactly that ridge will be built and how powerful it'll be to determine the exact trajectory. But you see, still very gen um, similar forecast to the European model when it comes to the second snowstorm. And they're both taking a very similar snowfall forecast for much of the West Coast. So I will say that certainty is relatively high for a snowstorm that's around seven days out, but we just gotta iron out those few um, minor differences between the two computer models before we could get a really accurate forecast. And I'll keep you guys updated regarding any changes with the forecast over the next several days. Let me show you guys the 500 millibar height anomaly to better show you guys what I'm talking about. So this is a European model's forecast when the center of circulation is located right over California. We see that there's going to be a very large ridge built over the eastern half of the United States by ne late next week. And this ridge is strong enough to steer the low pressure system a lot further northward uh, more quickly than the GFS model. So we see more of that heavy snowfall. Um, focus in right around the northern Great Lakes and Minnesota and Minneapolis where the more northwestern portions of the Midwest experience snowfall in this scenario where the ridge is a lot stronger. Comparing it to the GFS model, we see that while the ridge is so strong, we see much more of a weakness in ridging a little bit further northward where the winds shift more from a straight southerly direction to more of a southwesterly direction. So this low pressure system would take more of a um, westerly direct, um, will move more from a westerly direction, which would allow the snow to impact the areas a little bit further southward. Definitely going to need to pay close attention to how the air pressure builds along the eastern half of the United states to really determine who receives the heaviest snowfall so this is the european model snowfall forecast for next week we do see that all, um, large areas of the western half of the united states and the higher elevations receive over a foot of snow and the higher elevations of california could receive two to three feet of snow from the next two snowstorms moving through so uh, make sure to watch out for that possibility by next week and we could see the same for the higher elevations of the colorado mountains as well and moving to the northern midwest we see a pretty large area of three to six to uh, over six inches of snow in the european model scenario this would be the combination of the next two snowstorms moving through most of the snow will be produced by the second snowstorm that's expected to move through by late next week so on um, the northern midwest could potentially be in for um over six inches of snow but mostly a large area of three to six inches of snow the gfs model's forecast is almost completely identical to what the european model is stating for the western half of the united states where we're seeing over a foot of snow in many of the higher ele um, elevations of the west coast and moving to the midwest we do see some key differences much um in the european model scenario the Mi michigan isn't experiencing much snowfall at all outside of the extreme northern portions of michigan but in this scenario um, thanks to a weaker ridge michigan would be in for a very significant snowstorm with um, 6 to 12 inches of snow in the forecast in the gfs model scenario and we still see a more imp uh, um a more snowfall overall for much of the midwest where minnesota um, South Dakota and um, the northern portions of Wisconsin could receive close to six inches of snow. So you want to pay close attention at these as these next two snowstorms move through the northern Midwest by next week. 
So this is my snowfall forecast for much of the um, western half of the United States as well as the Midwest for next week. I'm not putting in specific snowfall numbers just yet because it's still a little bit uncertain at this time when we're talking about forecasts that's days out. But I will assure you that much of the western half of the United States will likely experience two major winter storms. So make sure to prepare for that and northern Midwest um it is likely we'll experience a major winter storm by late next week and a smaller winter storm by early next week um but there's still uncertainty regarding the exact trajectory of the second snow storm but i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days but yeah guys um i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content